as a Christian, God did not wash away your brain. It really washed away your sins. Being a Christian does not mean you can't have sex with your wife in the car. Really? Yeah. For me, every problem either has a solution or a problem. Money is made by man. Mm. So how do I get money? I get money from men. Hamza, what did you do last night? <laughs> Hamza, what did you do last night? <laughs> How was your Friday night? Uh, well, after work, I went to a lounge with a female friend and just had Bada. drinks and pepper soup. So, what kind of, what kind of pepper soup did you have? Uh, Blood meat. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Usually on Friday nights, they're usually calling me like, ah, aren't you going to go to school? But for some reason, I've been really conflicted as I'm growing my relationship with God. But I know for bad guys, that's like what you guys normally do. How do we define a bad, a bad guy? Who, who is a bad guy, first of all? I would say, well, first of all, he's cool. He is in touch with the times. He has the ladies. Huh. <laughs> he knows where the hottest <laughs> clubs are. A school of thought to say people that um, smoke, drink, do all the... Secular the things. Secular, quote and unquote, secular things, right? Okay. And I think that's... Um, how you define a bad guy, but um, there are some extremist religious Christians that see going to club as being bad or drinking as being bad. Um, there are some extremes, I mean. Well, I, I think the term bad um, is one of those uh, terms that has evolved and mm. is, uh, it, it, the context may differ. So I could see Hamza's uh, native, I'm like, wow, bad guy, mm. you know, and yeah. in that context is like cool, like, you know, really, you're looking really, really cool and sharp. And I think also bad may be actually being notorious. So maybe it's also a case of uh, what is bad may be contextual or maybe relative, mm. you know, as the case may be. There are like some personalities, okay, like there's this guy that works in my office and he's a very quote unquote spirit coco. Seeing that kind of person, okay, at work in the daytime, then go to a club at night, you be like, ah, ah, mm -hmm. <laughs> what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah. So there's that um, con separation of a good guy and a bad guy, mm -hmm. and I'm lost as to why. Personally, when I first gave my, I've given my life to Christ many times. <laughs> when I first gave my life to Christ again um it was something i struggled with because um i just felt like okay and the reason why i would drop it and pick it up was because i felt like oh as soon as i'm a christian people are expecting me to be good mm. i drop all my songs i drop all my movies mm. i can't listen watch family guy or south park or all the things that like bring me joy so what does one do now from what you said i mean i could relate to the fact that um the is a general expectation that a Christian mm. shouldn't do this, shouldn't say this, shouldn't mm. watch this, shouldn't mm. be at this place, should, and, and is that really how it should be? So it makes the whole thought of being a Christian very unattractive, unattractive exactly. to yeah. other people, mm. and then it's yeah. like, I'd rather not, maybe yeah. when I'm getting older, when I'm ready for it, when I have nothing to do for, yeah. I'll give my life, but I'll as I'll now, let me enjoy life. Yeah. Mm. But I, I really don't think that's, that, that's the case. Well, I think it's, um, it makes us really become hypocrites that's just plain and truth because yeah. we there's a certain expectation like you've said of what it means to be a christian so we feel compelled to look to be that mm. and we realize in trying to be that is not realistic right so what happens is that we try to be that in front of people and then the the reality of who we are you know, becomes another person or another outcome yeah. in another life. Being a Christian, really, I think it's it's a it's it, it's a call to a new identity, right? You know, and essentially, you having a new identity is is a is a function of what should play out over time based on the relationship you now have. Mm. So what I'm saying essentially is that what makes you a Christian are not those things that you do. What makes you a Christian is an identity. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah, but That's where do you I cross realize. the line? Because yeah, somebody can be like, yeah. I'm a bold Christian, but I'm going to do what I want to do anyway. So is that taking Christianity for granted? I don't know. Where do you draw there the line? Be, there, there should be a line, that, like a, a boundary. Like, so, for example, mm -hmm. a thing like um, sex. 
Mm -hmm. it, so things that a Christian is not expected to do, so that I believe the things that people believe Christians should, should not, not do, do, but they can actually do it. Do it yeah. But there are those things that Christians should not even be caught doing. Yeah. From so their identity. Okay, so again, it's, it's a, I would say it's a function of a moral code. Hmm. Being a Christian or being a religious person is a function of a moral code. So, for example, there was a time in our society where wearing trousers was seen as wrong. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So, it means that the moment as a lady you wear trousers, you've broken the moral code. No so, so now the question is that who defines the moral code? And of course, you, mm -hmm. you know, the moral code may vary based on society. Mm -hmm. Essentially, you know, the Bible says that God loved us and he, demo he showed us his love while we were yet sinners. As in, while there was nothing like salvation or being born again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God's love for us and we now becoming Christian is not a function of something we end. It's a gift. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing we need to admit and acknowledge. Question. Sure. Or, ca or caveat rather. Mm -hmm. But uh, no, there's, there's somewhere in the Bible that says, shall we continue to take that grace, grace for slash granted. gift for granted? Very good, quite very good point. And I think the, there's also a misunderstanding there. Because you see, the, the, the Bible says that uh, it is the goodness of God that makes people do the right thing. I know it's not realistic, really, for me to be in, in perfect standing with God based on this moral code that we're giving ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's not possible. So does it mean that the whole Bible thing is a fraud? Maybe not, but perhaps we're interpreting it wrongly. So what, what I see, or what I came to realize is that we are first Christians mm -hmm. and being a Christian, being accepted, being born by God is, is, is a gift that God has given to us. Mm -hmm. Now, the life we now live and what compels us in making our decisions day by day is a function of the relationship we now have with, with, you know, with Christ. Mm -hmm. So we have a new relationship with Christ, a personal relationship with Christ. And it is the love relationship we have with Christ that compels us to do all the things that we should do. So it is my relationship with God that is teaching me how to become committed. Is it, does it mean that I don't find any other girl attractive? Of course not. So for me, I think what works is knowing that I have a relationship with God and knowing that regardless of who I am, because I wasn't the best before I was forgiven or before he sent his son to die for me, right. that gives me a sense of direction as to what I should and shouldn't do. I mean, I've learned over time that even the things that I know are wrong, and I still go ahead to do them, the consequences are really... Mm -hmm. So those, those things are for my sake. It's not saying I shouldn't do them because of him, it's, doing it, it's because of my own safety, because right. of my own emotional well-being. Right. Mm -hmm. There are some right. things I've done and I wish I've never ever done, and I'm struggling to come out of. Mm -hmm. right. So that relationship guides me. It's right. a relationship, and right. it, gui it really guides me. I think we can summarize it in that Bible verse that says that we should walk in the Spirit, and then you automatically not fulfill the loss of the flesh. Now, that, that walk in the Spirit does not necessarily mean you should be speaking in tongues. <laughs> 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 you should be reading your Bible, you know, and all. It actually just means that just walk in the love relationship you have mm -hmm. with your God. And being a Christian does not mean you can't have sex with your wife in the car. Does that mean you can? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, because no, there's there's a certain expectation of oh, as a Christian, okay. you're just supposed to be holding dead. your wife and speaking in tongues and saying bless you, bless you, bless you. No, <laughs> it can be cool. Just you know, enjoy that relationship. Yeah. And, and the most the most beautiful thing God made is human beings. Mm. Yeah. So God is not boring. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we all know God is not boring. Yeah. Right? Yes. <laughs> he, he, he created sex. Exactly. Anyways. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs>